All right, so joining me here at the uh, High Times Medical Cannabis Cup Los Angeles, we have our guest, Patty Cakes, from the uh, Hemp Radio Program. Welcome to the show. And uh, you have to introduce our other guest, because I don't know the name. Hi, Patty. Hey, what's happening, Russ? So, and your, and your friend here? This is Dank Diva. Hi, everyone. We have a Dank Diva and a Patty Cakes. Yes. Oh, I've never, I've never been so blessed in my life. So you fine ladies are working with uh, HempRadio.com, so tell folks about that. HempRadio.com, we tape on every Thursday in Huntington Beach, and we basically, we get together, we get high, have a feast, have some dinner, and we get on our show, and we kind of vent on, you know, the local issues and, you know, the nation, you know, the national issues, you know, with normal and basically our fight to legalize. So yeah, it's a really guys, fun show. I know you guys. Uh, it's, so it's you two, and then Candace from Candace Haas, who's the director of Orange County Normal, and I'm also the public relations director for Normal. And also we're with the Orange County Normal Women's Alliance. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, and that's new, and we. Sure. Threat. Oh my God, we are hot and dangerous. Oh, absolutely. And very dank. And folks, check out normal.org slash women if you want more information on the Women's Alliance. I love your hat. Show people, this is the camera right here. Oh, yes. You're here's the 420 Mad Hatter. Oh, well, I, I love just, it. I couldn't fit it on with my headphones, but here's my little hat. Little 420, I'm muffling the mic. Sorry. Did you make that? Um, actually, it was from a Mad Hatter costume, and I just added a leaf. It actually says 42069, but I wasn't trying to give everybody the wrong idea. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't like that, but... Well, in 1969, honey, you weren't even born yet, I don't think. I Not don't quite. I think we were talking about the year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, Russ, okay? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Just for our, our less uh, our less astute listeners out there. So uh, Hemp Radio is on, and, and we, it's also on the normal network. We're uh, replaying it on Friday nights, so people are listening to you guys every Friday night as well. That's great. We love that. A lot of people have been giving us feedback on it, and they like hearing it right after your show. Oh, so. good, good. It's well, perfect. So, so in doing this show and, and you know, being down here in Southern California, the epicenter of what's going on here with medical cannabis, uh, is that what got you into doing the radio show, being patients or caregivers or growers in some way? Um, basically starting out being patients, and then I went from a patient to being an activist and just started getting you know more involved with you know patient rights, but not only patient rights, but rights for you know people who also want to medicate you know for recreational use. You know, it's still safer than alcohol. So right. that's one of my big, you know, one of my big passions. I'm definitely a victim of drunk driving. So well, how did that how that affect you? Um, it definitely had a negative effect. Um, it was my mother actually, and she had got. She quite was a, a drunk driver. Yeah, she was. Were she you was, in the car? I was not in the car, thankfully, but I know just from memory that I was in the car with her. You know, a few, quite a few times with her being under the influence of alcohol, and that. Oh my God! How horrible! And you know, and she was driving back from the store and was drunk and oh, she no. got into an accident and two people died from that and oh my god and she, you know she's yeah. never been she did 5 years in you know state prison and oh, you know she wow. did serve her time in her debt to society but you know when you really think about those two families i'm sure you know just devastated my mom's never been able to forgive herself she's not the same person what do you what do you think about you know because one of the things that happens as we start discussing uh, re-legalization in these states is they also oh we got to worry about the stone drivers what about the stone drivers oh listen they did a survey and people that smoke pot drive slower and there's never been any recorded accidents strictly from uh, use of cannabis. Yeah, yeah. but I, I, I would have to say I definitely am an advocate of being safe on the road and I, I think it, Wait, it don't can drive. be... I think it can be a hindrance. I think it's, you know, safer for you to medicate, you know, before you go to your destination or after you get there, or both if needed. But while you're driving, I mean, you really need, it's just like talking on the cell phone and driving. Yeah. So oh, you wouldn't have a beer and drive your car for God's sake. Exactly. So I mean, I think if we really want to get legalization across to the naysayers, we need to have the same respect and we need to not smoke and drive. Yeah. That's just that's my opinion. But and you know, normal people like us, that's how we do but it. But I, I would have to say that instead of running red lights. Um, <laughs> Or stop signs, we stop and wait for the stop sign to turn green. So that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, yeah. We're speaking with Patty Cakes and Dank Diva from HempRadio.com. And uh, Patty Cakes, I'll throw the same question out to you. What got you into doing Hemp Radio and being an activist? 
I've been an activist uh, since college, and that's been a long time ago. And uh, I did a show called Renegade Talk FM. That's what started me. I did uh, with Richie Rich, and um, I did Cannabis Thursday. And they left and went to Hawaii, so it was like, oh my God, I'm on my own now. So Candace was doing the show with me on Renegade. Okay. We took the show and created our own show and uh, Hemp Radio. Right. And uh, we found fabulous people to work okay, with us. Okay, everybody, so now I we have a great welcome team. you. Uh, oh, first of on. all, to the first down. annual Los Angeles Medical Cannabis. That's inside. That's the uh, panels here. inside they're getting started with. So I. Uh, Are they gonna? Oh, no, we're fine. We're, we're Are good. they judging the pot now? No, no. This is the, uh, I believe, the uh, uh, lawyer's panel where they're discussing, you know, the different laws. And yeah, Candace things. is going to be a speaker in one of the panels. I'm not sure which one. It might be tomorrow. At it's tomorrow. Candace is so. tomorrow. Yeah, because yeah. I think I'm on the panel with her. Oh, right on. <laughs> so it'll be a good right panel. On. Okay, so let me ask you this, Russ. Sure. I mean, you're going to be on a panel for what? That's the activism panel. Okay, and uh, how long have you been an activist? Uh, I volunteered at first with Normal in 2005, so I'm really new to this. Uh, I started in 05. Uh, you're a years. baby. I've yeah. been fighting this war for, I'm going to say 30 years. It sounds good. <laughs> okay, 30 sounds good. But uh, yeah, I got just. And I started baking. And uh, my patients were all people that had cancer, yeah. MS. And it, it was it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life when I get a phone call from somebody that says, oh my God, you saved my life. I got through chemo for the first time. And that's what got me going and then the radio show and you know it's it, I'm very involved with Normal, the Normal Women's Alliance, the Human Solution. It's a great group of people and it's just uh, we're going to do it and I believe the women are going to take us there. Yeah, it's what happened with the uh, alcohol prohibition. Exactly. So history is definitely going to repeat itself, and it's going to start right here in Orange County on HempRadio.com. So everybody listen to us, and and we as women, oh, we're going to let some men in, aren't we? Or are we? Well, you know, we need everyone's help. And basically what activism is is just, act, you know, activating yourself and others, you know, for a positive, you know, end result. Yes. And that's exactly what would happen if we were to legalize cannabis, you know. It's safer than alcohol, it's safer than prescription drugs, you know, and it, it's just common sense. You know, there's still zero, zero, zero deaths. That's, that's all I can say. When people, when, you know what, when people ask us, the, uh, the most you can say, I mean, you, there's nothing to say but zero deaths. Right. You die on aspirin, I mean, you, you can die on peanuts. Zero death with marijuana, cannabis, weed, pot, whatever you want to call it, it's a weed. Right on. Now, uh, Orange County Normal, you're active with Orange County Normal. Check them out at orangecountynormal.org. Uh, 420 is coming up in a couple months. Any big plans for 420? Oh, of course. Well, you know what? Every day is 420 for us. <laughs> That's you true. know, I mean, we're we're pretty uh, close-knit group of people. We do a yeah. show together every week. We're very involved in all the organizations, and it's our extended family. Yeah, we all we usually have an event for Orange County Normal every 420. So we'll be having some details on that soon. We'll be, we'll be in the in the planning works right now. So we like to have fun. Oh yeah. Sometimes I, we have carnival. And we're safe. I know you do that big uh, surf open protest. Is that yeah. still happening? Yeah, we do um, protests in wait the a minute, summer. Wait a minute, let's straighten this out. We're not protesting the surf because we love those young bodies. Yes, we do. But <laughs> that's where we do our information and education there we go. of Our cannabis. rallies. We call them our beach rallies. That's a better word. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're there once a month, you know, every summer. And sometimes we get two Saturdays in, but it's really a lot of fun. We bring extra signs and people come and hold the signs. We, we have do, grandmothers. We do the air fresh tattoos and yeah exactly you know your grandma your grandmother your aunt your uncle you your know mother, your, your adult mother. children you know sure. everybody does it baby it's a medicine it's right. a, they've been doing it for uh, over 10,000 years hello <laughs> yeah. that's the truth it's God's gift so well let's get the uh, card here patty cakes and dank diva from hempradio.com right there HempRadio.com. Look can... how cute that is. Are we supposed to be like looking into this camera and yeah, talking? Yeah, see, there you are right there. Oh my there God, I right love there. it. You're live on the internet. Fabulous. How do we look? I can't see with these glasses on. Beautiful. Wonderful. Okay. Fabulous. Oh, you're going to have to come Fantastic. on our show. That's all the right words. Anytime. Anytime. So, Dank Diva and Patty Cakes, thanks for joining us here. Check out HempRadio.com. Uh, you're replayed on the normal network Fridays at 6. What time are you on live? 
or we are on live um, Thursdays at six. Thursdays at six. Okay, Thursdays so no, we're six not live. We we you post it. Well, we, we post, post it. it. Yeah, we, we around eight o'clock. Wow. <laughs> so catch it at hempradio.com and then catch the replay right here at the Normal Network. Thanks, ladies, for stopping in. Thank, Thank you. Russ. All right. We're going to get you back to the inside panels there for the uh, High Times Medical Cannabis Cup. So about here's your audio. Check out the entire video. If you want to catch just the video of these panels, they are available at the Radical Russ channel. So just go to ustream.tv slash channel slash Radical Russ. We're also recording them there. So you will be able to get them uh, on demand later. So check that out. We'll go back to the audio. And thanks again. We'll see you. I wanted to stop, but I can't because... I like the people, so uh, that's it. Um, hi, I'm Alan Frankel. I'm an in internist. I've worked in the uh, West Los Angeles area doing more standard internal medicine for 25 years, tired of the necessity of prescribing addicting benzodiazepines and pain meds and a num number of other psychotropic meds, and left. Um, never smoked cannabis at that point, but had been involved in medical cannabis for glaucoma, UCLA, for giving, you know, handing out joints uh, that were available by the bag full to cancer patients. And I just kept running into from a medical perspective. And when I started doing it full time, I moved to Venice just to all get into the culture of it. And that was successful, and I really enjoy the culture of it. But the medicine has, in the last 18 months for me has totally changed. Um, either orally, um, it is possible for a, particularly with a CBD rich medication to use orally, or sublingually to have a dose pro proven effectively repeated over and over and over again, and having the ability to continue to, you know, help patients get access to this medicine has been, for me, the most exciting part of my life ever practicing medicine and seeing patients and seeing them in front of me and, you know, wherever they get their, you know, their CBD, they get their CBD and I'll, I'll often instruct them on how they should, you know, administer it. And for me, it's a miracle 10 times a day. And I thank everybody for the privilege. I'm Fred Gardner. I, I'm editing O'Shaughnessy's now. I've been political all my life, which is a long, long, long life. I've been political <laughs> since the 50s. My dad was in the newspaper guild. My mom was a found, charter member of the teachers' union when it was really a progressive union. And uh, they, they um, lost their jobs in the McCarthy era, and I have never uh, been impressed by the uh, level of freedom in this country or its role in the world. And in the 60s, um, after I, I was in the Army, stationed at Fort Polk, Louisiana in 63, it was a segregated town. We had to go out a pretty horrible scene. And then in, as the Vietnam War heated up and, and I, I was opposed to it, I had an idea that maybe you could set up a hip coffee house in one of these army towns and it would be like a magnet for the hip guys. And it was guys in those days, and with a few exceptions. And um, the, the anti-war coffee houses became hangouts for a, a certain fraction. of of soldiers, and in that period, we, I was sort of playing the cop with respect to marijuana. When somebody would tell me that they smelled smoke from the bathroom, 